time-worn wasteland of an abandoned Imperial ship, a Necron cryptic scours the debris in search of exotic curio from ages past. From within their hidden stronghold, a band of savage crew detect the disturbance. At a moment's notice, they emerge from the shadows, prepared to repel the intruders at all costs. Can this mercenary kin band defend their garrison, beset by Necron forces from all sides? Or will their undying adversaries wipe all memory of crew life from this forsaken vessel? Welcome to Mountainside Tabletop! Hey folks, thanks for hanging out for another Kill Team Into the Dark Battle Report. Today, I'm going to be in control of the recently buffed Farstalker Kin Band. My team is led by a Kroot Kill Broker and is made up of all of the possible specialists with a warrior, a hound, and then thanks to the new buffs, an extra hound. I think the extra hound is actually going to be a huge addition to this team because it unlocks GA2 with the dogs and it helps me out activate Brad even more. With the recently updated equipment points, I'm able to put a trophy on my kill broker and long sight, meat and a crude pistol to my cut skin, and also ritual blades to my kill broker. This is going to help me address some of the less than ideal hitting stats and give me some healing and extra APL. So I think my general strategy for this game is going to be to kind of react to what Brad does and then try to overwhelm him in sections of the board that I think he doesn't have a lot of units. I now have some pretty good shooting and uh, we'll see if I can shoot him hard enough to get past all that annoying healing and tankiness. All right, so if you have seen our last battle report that featured these guys, they sucked and I would say that I'm not worried about anything. However, <laughs> they did get buffed. So there's three really powerful uh, like gunner type operatives that had their ballistic skill change from a four up to a three up, which I think is actually pretty huge. The long sight also got buffed from a three up ballistic skill to a two up, which is like really, really good. So now these gunners that were kind of meh are actually like really decent and the, the sniper's like pretty strong. So I'm gonna have to watch my angles, just be careful of uh, where I position myself. If I'm out in the open, I could easily get sniped and that's not something I wanna have happen. One of the other buffs which Vic already mentioned is that he gets to bring an extra operative and uh, he's bringing an extra hound. It might not seem that strong because the hounds are just kind of like, okay, but they have GA2, so having two of them is actually really, really good. They're gonna have a 10 inch charge range, so uh, they could easily get across the map and eat my guys up or even just lock them down. Pretty much every single one of my operatives has terrible fighting, so if they're engaged with one of Vic's melee operatives, uh, that's really bad news for me and I might just consider them dead. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sup y'all, Brad here, and I've returned with my Hyrotech Circle Kill team. Shockingly, even with all the changes, I'm bringing the exact same list as last time. Now you might be thinking, Brad, why are you bringing the death mark? You already said in the last video, the forward deploy can't work anymore and is just like not good. But I'm bringing a death mark again for a couple of reasons. First off, the phase oculars equipment got buffed, so now it can be used for zero AP. It's quite an upgrade, I think it's just going to make the shooting better overall and just it helps with the general viability of the death marks. The other big thing for me though is actually I think the death marks got a stealth buff. The forward deploy nerf obviously is, you know, it hurts the death mark a bit because they can't just go up into a closed room and just hide. However, the way it was changed allows them to now move up and open a door before any activations are made in the first turning point. So even though they have heavy, this forward deploy move doesn't occur during their activation. So if I'm able to open a door and get in a decent position before they even activate, they can still shoot even on the first turn. So that's pretty good, I think. And on the map we're gonna be playing on, I think it'll work perfectly. So big props to the death mark. And like I said, everything else is the same. I've got the Chronomancer with the Entropic Lance. And for my Cryptek actions, I've picked Counter Temporal Nanomine and Chronometron again. 
I've got both Plasma Sites and the Apprentech, a Despotech, two Immortals with Gauss Blasters, and of course, the Deathmark. Then for equipment, I've put a Phase Shifter on my Cryptech, just so they have an invulnerable save. Uh, I figure that might be decent because Vic does have a few AP weapons. I've given Tesla Weave to my Apprentech and Despotech, and also I've given the newly buffed Phase Oculars to my Deathmark. So this Cryptech was scary enough pre-buffs, but uh, now I'm really worried about it. He's got a few extra wounds, so he's going to be pretty hard to take down with 13. This newly buffed command ability to cost 0 AP is pretty worrisome. It doesn't really just require line of sight from the Cryptech, and there's some ways to work around it. And so that's something I'm definitely going to have to watch out for. And as always, uh, hitting on 4s sucks, and hitting on 3s is awesome, so that's another buff to worry about. Other than that, uh, you know, the team is scary in the way that Necrons always are. They move slow, so that's one thing that can help me, but they can take a lot of hits and they can do a lot of damage. For this battle, we're using some of the new setup rules from the new Critical Operations Update Card Pack. We'll be using the store layout for the map. The mission is secure. It'll cost us 1 AP to secure a point that we control, and an objective remains secured by your kill team until it's secured by an operative from an opposing kill team. Each secured objective grants one victory point at the end of each turning point. Something else that's new from the new Critical Operations update though, a maximum of four victory points can be scored from primary objectives each turning point, and over the entire course of the game, there's a maximum limit of 12 victory points that can be scored from primary objectives. In the initial roll-off, I win and select to be the attacker. Brad picks a side, and then we set up our barricades. Next, we set up our deployments, deploying uh, in three separate groups, as is the fashion now. In the scouting phase, I selected an extra barricade, and Brad selected a free dash. This gives him initiative for TP1, and the game begins. At the start of the turning point, Vic is already down one CP after spending one on mercenary contract in the pregame. This gave him a chance to pick tac ops from recon and seek and destroy. Neither of us play any strategic ploys, but I am forced to reveal one of my tac ops. I reveal Unyielding Ancients, which scores at the end of the game, and I need to have at least three operatives within six inches of either the center of the board or of Vic's drop zone. I get the second point from this tac op if one of those operatives is the Cryptek or Apprentek. Vic reveals no tac ops and we move on to the firefight phase. Before my first activation, I use Dimensional Translocation. Now obviously this has changed from the last video we made, but now this lets the Deathmark make a free normal move and open a door. So I'm just gonna move him up here and uh, hold the hallway. And now for my real first activation, I'm gonna move and dash this immortal to objective five. Okay, my warrior is gonna move up to objective six and open the hatch on the way. Then my despotech moves and dashes next to the death mark. My cut skin is gonna move into the room beside the warrior. And my accelerator plasma site is just gonna open this door. Stupidly, I put it too far away from a valid buff target, not realizing I couldn't buff the Cryptech, so uh, I'll just pass with the second AP. My Pistolier's gonna move into this bottom room and keep putting pressure in this area of the board. All right, now for me, it's time to activate my Cryptech. First thing, they're gonna put Chronometron on the Immortal near Objective 1 to give him a speed boost and a feel no pain. Then the Cryptech's gonna move onto Objective 4 and secure it. And then finally, for zero AP, the Cryptech is gonna command the Immortal on objective number five to secure it. Even though the Cryptech doesn't have line of sight on that Immortal, the Despotech does, and so the Cryptech can still cast command. All right, my Stalker is gonna move into this room and finally tap objective six. Next up for me, I activate the Apprentech. They move up just to join the Deathmark and Despotech, and then they will cast Counter Temporal Nanomine near objective five. That's a good play, because I was eyeing that Immortal with my two dogs, but now they can't charge. So my Heavy Gunner is going to move up and capture Objective 3. Now my Reanimator Plasma Site moves onto Objective 1 and secures it. Alright, my Bow Hunter is going to move into the large room and open the door on her way. This Immortal is going to move up to join the Cryptech. 
my cold blood moves into this large room. I'm too slow to get to objective two, so I won't even go near it for now. My death mark uses phase oculars and then guards. All right, well now Brad's out of activation, so I can do a few things in a row here. My kill broker is gonna move up and open the door while staying concealed and hidden. Then my tracker is gonna release his bird and mark the forward immortal for the hunt. This means that immortal won't get any benefit from light cover for the rest of this activation. Then finally my snoop, snooper. <laughs> my sniper is gonna use their take aim ability and take a shot at the immortal. Not a great roll, so I do use a CP to reroll. Uh, Brad saves a crit and two hits and is down to four wounds. All right, next I'm just gonna move the hounds up so they're in a better position to get some nasty charges in the next turn. And that's the end of turning point one. Pretty cagey by both of us in this turning point. Brad ends up at three victory points. I end up at two victory points. Not bad. I mean, I obviously would have liked to have more, but I think we were just moving our guys around and getting into some better positions and starting to slowly reveal our strategies here. At the end of turning point one, I, I realized I made a terrible mistake. <laughs> so my other two unrevealed tack ops are Surge and Courier. Basically, my strategy going into this was just keep my entire team together, move them all up together toward the front right area of the board, and just score like six points of tack op points in the last two turns of the game. Unfortunately, I think I picked really, really bad tack ops, <laughs> and now I think I'll score like no tack ops, but we'll see. Uh, maybe if I can kill enough guys, I can get into this room over on the bottom right side, and uh, if I can do that, I'm in a really good spot. If I can't, I might concede. <laughs> <laughs> All right, at the top of turning point two, Brad goes up to four CP and I go up to three. He of course wins initiative and then during the living metal phase, his immortal goes back up to six HP. Neither of us reveal any strategic ploys, but in the target reveal phase, I reveal eliminate guards in which I nominate objective number five and this immortal in the middle. And then I reveal secure unexplored rooms, which is the new into the dark specific recon tack op. All right, first activation, I'm gonna move my immortal down the corridor and guard. All right, now my warrior is going to move up and open this door. I do need to take out this immortal, but I don't need to do it quite yet, and I'm hoping to just interrupt what Brad does with his crypt tech. Brad does his guard attack with his immortal, rolls pretty terribly, and I easily save it, which I never thought I'd say playing the crew. Now I move up my plasma site, and then I'm just going to boost the AP of this immortal chillin' next to the crypt tech. All right, well, my pistolier is now going to move into this hallway and guard, so I can uh, blast anyone in the mouth when they open the door. All right, the time is now. This immortal is going to open this door. Vic, unsurprisingly, uses his pistolier and does a guard attack on me. He rolls okay, so I use a CP to reroll one of my defense dice, and it ends up doing three wounds. Then my immortal is going to shoot, targeting the cut skin, and I kill him. All right, well, I can't let this immortal live any longer, so it's time to release the hounds. Release the hounds. Well, neighbor, I see you've got your running shoes on. That's a good thing. So I was a little bit conflicted here of whether or not I should charge the first one and then charge the second one to have the attack bonus or to just charge and fight them independently. In the end, I decided eight dice is better than five, so the first one charges and fights gets an abysmal roll and dies. I did elect to use a CP here just to reroll one of my misses and try and go for the guaranteed kill. And luckily for me, it paid off. So with GA2, the next hound is gonna charge in, only need one hit here and I easily get the kill. This scores me one victory point for eliminate guards. Also before moving on, I do use commence reanimation on this guy, uh, which is now free. So it cost me nothing. All right, next up for me, I'm going to activate my Crypt Tech, and the first thing it's going to do is command my Immortal to shoot one of Vic's warriors. I got a crap roll, it's a complete whiff. Next, my Crypt Tech's going to move up and shoot Vic's Pistolier. Here I actually get such a great roll that Vic doesn't even need to roll defense. The Pistolier's dead. Finally, with my last AP, I'm going to use my Crypt Tech action, the Counter Temporal Nanomine, and just plop this down to make all the crew in the area slower. All right, next my Birdman is gonna activate his bird and I'm gonna mark the Despotech for the hunt. Then I'm gonna shoot and miss. 
Now I'm gonna activate my Despo Tech and move and shoot this dog just chilling in the hallway. Unfortunately, from the angle I'm shooting at, Vic gets to use the rogue ability here, so he auto retains two saves. And only one hit goes through, so the dog's down to three HP. All right, now my sniper is gonna do his take aim ability and fire at the Despotech. Unfortunately, after all is said and done, only nine wounds go through, bringing him down to, of course, one HP. This member of the one HP gang is brought to you by George. Thanks, George. Sick nasty. <laughs> now my uh, my reanimator plasma site's just gonna move and open a door. All right, next my cold blood is gonna move up in this big room and I could tap the point at number two, but instead I'm gonna spend the AP to secure the kill on this one HP despotech. That's so bad, dude. Okay, I have to reroll. Absolutely have to reroll. Yeah, because there's a good chance I saved that. Yeah. <laughs> on threes? Yep. Oh! Crazy. Now do I reroll? Okay. F nice. Terrible roll here. Use a CP and it continues to be a terrible roll. And then uh, Brad saves it. That's huge. Yeah. It was lucky. I could have rerolled and it did nothing. Yeah, I know. That would be crazy. <laughs> All right, well, I'm gonna activate my death mark here, and uh, first I'm gonna use phase oculars for zero AP, and then I'm gonna shoot at the Kroot bow hunter. Absolutely dank roll, and he dead, he's so dead that he's super dead. Okay, well now, to retaliate, my leader is gonna take a shot at Brad's death mark. Unfortunately, the death mark saves everything, and so no wounds go through. Nice. Uh, okay, now my Apprentech is just gonna try and shoot Vic's leader. So again, Rogue is in play here, so Vic's gonna auto-retain two defense dice. I managed to score at least one crit that's gonna go through, uh, so I bring the leader down to five HP. Then I got one AP left, and I'm gonna put Chronometron on the Plasma Site in the hallway, because uh, I'm afraid that he might get attacked, and this might, might, might let him stay alive. All right, now my stalker is gonna move up as far as he can with that slowdown mine and use a shotgun on the immortal. Uh, only three wounds go through here, but that immortal's down to four HP. Sucks with the living metal that's around the corner though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, so I actually get a, an overwatch here. So I'm gonna use my death mark to do an overwatch attack against Vic's leader. Rogue is still in play, but I get a really great roll and uh, the leader is down. All right, well now, finally, one and a half battle reports into his life, my heavy gunner is gonna move into the hallway and take a shot. I'm aiming at the immortal here, I easily kill him, and then on the attack against the plasma site with Torrent, easily would have killed him, but since Brad gave it the five up feel no pain, it just survives. And with that, the second turning point is over. I'm gonna score three VP for primaries, bringing me up to six and Vic scores two for primaries and one for secure unexplored rooms. So we're both up at six VP. Yeah, that felt like oh, an absolute worst case turning point for me. It feels like every time I tried to do something, my shots would just clang off the Necron armor and then I would die in response. But I think I've still got a lot of play. I've just lost a couple more units than I was hoping to by this point. For secured unexplored rooms, I'm selecting to take the big room, even though I could also take the hallway. I think I'm gonna abandon this big room in the coming turning points and wanna have as many bodies down the middle as I can for the end of the game. I'm feeling pretty good. Like I've gotten a lot of kills on these crews so far. I am a bit concerned about my ability to score my TAC Ops, and now that I'm doing some math, like I completely didn't consider the fact that new now with the new rules changes in this mission, I'm capped out at scoring 12 primary points, so uh, yeah, I think I might be in a position where I've committed too heavily to primaries and I picked terrible secondaries, not that Victor knows this yet, but uh, I might be in trouble, so I'm gonna have to really, really try and push forward and score some TAC Ops in turning point three. All right, well, before we move on for the second half of the game, we want to do a huge shout out to all our members over on the Patreon. You guys are really keeping us in business here and we wouldn't be able to do this without your incredible support. Yeah, we really just, we want to be able to put out more frequent battle reports for all of you watching. 
We want to put out like higher quality content, keep improving all this stuff that will make it a better, enjoyable experience for our viewers. And uh, the patrons are letting us do that. So really, really, really appreciate all of the support from the patrons. One of the perks the patrons get is a discount code for our Teespring merch. And uh, if you didn't catch it in our latest Warcry Battle report, uh, Vic made this commemorative 2022 One HP Gang members shirt. Uh, you can check it out. It's going to be not for sale anymore once February rolls around. So if you really want this shirt, grab it now. If you don't want this shirt, don't grab it now. And uh, if you want to get to TP3, you're in luck because now we're heading on to TP3. Thanks, patrons. <laughs> So we're in a new year now, new year, new me, new turning point, new initiative roll. So we roll off and uh, Vic wins. So my luck is out and uh, this could actually be an important initiative roll that I lost. So I'll probably just concede. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, finally win an initiative roll and uh, it sounds like all my resolutions are coming true. So I go up to three command points and Brad goes up to two. During reanimation, both his Immortal and Despotech reanimate, and then he does Living Metal, which now happens after the reanimation, which sucks for me. Yeah, my Immortal's up at 3 HP and my Despotech's up at 4. Unfortunately, they're both still injured, but it is what it is. At least they're alive. In the strategic phase, I play Cutthroats, which will give me an extra attack in melee. And then Brad plays Undying Androids and Relentless Onslaught. In the target reveal phase, I don't reveal any, but I once again nominate Objective 5 and the Despotech near it as the guard to assassinate. Brad reveals Surge Forward and Courier. For my Courier, I've selected my Cryptech just because Cryptech's got Fly and Cryptech has a lot of HP and also has an invulnerable save. Uh, I had died a little inside when I revealed these because now Vic finally realized how dumb my tack op picks were and how I might be screwed. It's a bit swingy. All right, well, Obviously, with the first activation, I'm going to move my heavy gunner up and shoot the Plasmacite, Deathmark, and Apprentech. Huge rolls here. All of them are flamed to death. This is devastating for me. I wasn't expecting them all to die. Also, having my Apprentech drop down here is really bad for me because it's going to make it way harder to score unyielding Ancients. Uh, so I guess I'm just going to use my free reanimation for the turning point and uh, reanimate this guy. All right, well, I guess uh, I'm up next. I'm gonna move this immortal here and just shoot Vic's warrior. Luckily, I do score a kill, so maybe I'm still in this. All right, well, now my stalker is gonna do his uh, fancy charge attack on the Cryptech. After all the dice are done and some clever parrying by Brad, the Cryptech is down to two HP and the stalker is dead. Wish I didn't lose the Stalker, but I'm happy to have brought down the Cryptech so far, and uh, especially with that Courier tack op looming. Don't love that, but uh, for now I'm just going to shoot this remaining dog with my Immortal. I get the kill, and then reposition. Now my Tracker is going to move the bird and buff the Cold Blood to 3 APL for his turn. And then he's going to take a pretty optimistic shot at the Despotech, and kill him, which is great, because I get one VP for execute guards. However, now I'm realizing I did this one activation too late, and I can't reveal balance the books because more than half of my operatives have died. If I had just done this one activation earlier, I would have a huge lead right now. There aren't very many models on the board here, and I only have two to activate, so uh, I think now's the time I'm going to activate my Cryptech. First, I'm going to command one of my Immortals to shoot at Vic's Heavy Gunner. I roll, and I get the kill. Next, I'm going to dash, and then I tap objective number six. Honestly, I know that with the primary point limit, this probably won't score me a point in the long term, but it will take a point away from Vic, and that's what I'm counting on. All right, well now my sniper, who's turning into a bit of an MVP for me, is gonna dash back and shoot the Cryptech. I fish for a crit with a command point and get it, which is massive. I'm able to bring down Brad's leader and more importantly, deny him two victory points from Courier. That's bad. Um, I have one activation left. I'm just gonna activate my plasma site here and uh, move him into the other back room. My thought process is I just wanna prevent Vic from being able to score the uh, Explore Rooms tack up. 
Yeah, my plan was definitely to hop back there and uh, that plasma site is pretty well protected. So now with my cold blood, I'm just gonna dash, tap objective number two, and then move closer to the center to start uh, throwing some bows later on. And that's the end of the turning point. Honestly, there's only a few units left on the board and I don't think I can score many more points. Uh, it's very close to mathematically impossible for me to win, but I do have a slight, slight chance. So um, yeah, let's just see what happens, I guess. I think we both have a lot to talk about with this game, which you can check out in our publicly available podcast, which will be coming out in a couple weeks, available on all the usual platforms and probably on YouTube as well. Also, in this uh, free episode of the podcast that will be coming out soon, we're going to be doing a Q&A. So if you have any questions for us about anything, you can write them in the comments below this video or come into our Discord and write them there. Uh, if you have a decent question, you'll get your question answered. And if you're a patron, you'll definitely get your question answered. All right, moving on. Turning point four coming up. All right, at the beginning of the final turning point, Brad is one VP ahead and I am one CP ahead, so we'll see if I can convert that into a tie. I don't know, it's it's pretty crazy. It's hard to tell what's gonna happen here. Yep, uh, big roll here. I'm trying to reanimate my Apprentech. If he doesn't come back now, he's never coming back. So I roll, and uh, he's not coming back. Uh, and with my Cryptech also down, I cannot score Unyielding Ancients, and it's gonna be really hard to score anything else. Uh, that is bad. Do you ever hear the tragedy of Darth? My Apprentech. The Wise. For strategic ploys, Vic doesn't use anything, and I'm gonna take myself back down to zero CP by playing Intractable March. Uh, I'm trying to get a bit of extra movement on my two alive immortals, and uh, it might make the difference between me being able to get a key charge or move and dash. We'll see. All right, well, with the first activation, my tracker is gonna buff the cold blood to three APL again, and then guard down this hallway. Okay, basically this plasma site's whole job is to deny Vic a point in the explore rooms tack op and I want to see what he does before I move my immortals so I'm just passing this plasma site. All right, well this is a huge activation here. My cold blood is going to move down the hallway, tap objective number five, and then shoot Brad's immortal with his piercing shot. Brutal roll, I spend a CP, it doesn't help, and of course the guy's down to one goddamn HP again. This member of the 1HP gang is brought to you by Bees Trigger. Thanks, Bees. That is very lucky. Uh, okay, well, I'm gonna move the Immortal that's not injured up onto objective six and just try and keep Vic from tapping it later. All right, now my sniper is gonna take a shot at this Immortal. If I can bring him down here, I'll win the game because Brad won't have enough units to contest everything he needs to for TAC Ops. Unfortunately, even though I used my last command point on a reroll, Brad saves enough and stays alive. So I'm going to activate my last Immortal and uh, take a shot at this Cold Blood. I roll, uh, the Cold Blood can use his hardy ability here, and I don't get the kill. So with my last AP, I just move up and tuck in behind this barricade. I'm just close enough to Vic's deployment zone to be able to score a Surge, and uh, that's the game. All right, at the end of turning point four, Brad maxes out his primaries and scores one extra from secondaries, bringing him up to 13 victory points. I score three more primaries and then one more secondary for secure unexplored rooms, bringing me up to 13 as well. Another glorious tie. Absolutely, the gods willed it. Oh yeah, and then we get uh, two more points for painting our armies. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny, in that last turning point, if either of us had got a kill, we would have winned, but it kind of win. <laughs> Leaving that in. <laughs> anyway, it kind of ended in a ridiculous wet noodle fight, but, uh, you know, it's the way she goes sometimes. Yeah, and I think um, this is a funny game. Victor put it nicely off uh, off camera. We Neither of us deserve to win. <laughs> uh, I think it was within both of our control to make better plays and, and secure the game here, but I think we both made some key misplays, and... Uh, <laughs> We, we didn't tie because we were both equally good. We tied because we were both equally bad. Yeah, but I, th I think it was still an interesting game. Oh, for sure. And it, was for a good, sure. it was a good tactical game, but I think, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I really like the buffs on these teams. For sure. I feel like the zero AP command now from the Cryptek feels super good. It feels so nice. Yeah. And uh, I think there are some really cheesy plays you can probably set up. <laughs> yeah. I didn't take full advantage of it here, but I think it's a fun team to play, and I think they're way more competitive than they were before. 
Uh, keep an eye out for our publicly available podcast at the beginning of February. We both have a lot to say about this game in the postmortem. Yep. Thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, check out our Discord. Check out our uh, shirts. Yep. Yeah. See you next time. Peace, y'all. Yeah.